Hi, I'm R.C. Jim, and uh, a while ago I did a, uh, a review on the FlySky uh, FS ST8 8-channel radio, very inexpensive 8-channel radio, and at the time I mentioned that uh, it's possible to buy a three-position switch uh, to be able to install it. Well, today we're going to have a look at that. Well, here we are at the workbench, and um, yeah, we've got our switches and our radio and so forth. Now, I might begin by saying it's been an absolute pain trying to get a three-position switch. I've been interacting back and forth. Well, first off, I ordered some switches online, and they were just totally the wrong thing. I don't know if it was on eBay, eBay or uh, uh, AliExpress or whatever, but one of those sorts of places, I got these neat little three-position switches, nice long levers on them, so all really uh, fine and good. But in actual fact, as you look at the um, the uh, conductors on the back of them, they're too far apart. <laughs> they don't match the circuit board. So I uh, emailed uh, FlySky in China and uh, had a very difficult time communicating, but uh, nonetheless asked them numerous times. I don't think they understood my English too well. Uh, and uh, got a bunch of just answers that didn't make any sense. Um, finally, um, I inquired through the website through a different sort of avenue, um, you know, like inquiring about a product type of a thing. Um, and the guy said, oh, uh, yeah, we can, we've got those, we can send them to you. And um, so I said, fine, you know, uh, I'll order uh, a couple of them, something like that. And... Um, then I got contacted back, and they said, oh, they only have one, but what I, uh, they have, I don't know if it was the, I think they said they had the left power button, uh, but they didn't have two of them, but they could send me the left one and the right one. And I tried to make it clear that I was after three position switches, and um, it seemed like they would both include a three position switch. I was aware that it wouldn't be just the three position switch. So they sent me both. But in actual fact, this, uh, well, first off, they're Paladin um, switches, so they're for the Paladin radio, not for the, the uh, uh, STSR8, or FSS, <laughs> FSST8, <laughs> which is what this one is. Um, uh, but I figure as long as they're the right switches, that's fine. But anyway, all three of these that they have labeled as right power button, they're all two position switches, every one of those. Um, yeah, and one of them is momentary. And let's see, what's this, this one here? Yeah, two of them are momentary. There's two momentary uh, two position switches and one uh, non-momentary two position switch in that pack. So totally worthless as far as I'm concerned. And the, um, the one where they uh, did have a three position switch, one of the switches is two position, which I expected that, that was okay. And they got one that's three position. Unfortunately, the three position switch has got a short arm on it. And um, I was hoping to put it here for flaps, you know, for, for this one. Now, in actual fact, my plane of the flaps, I've got it on the dial, and that seems to work okay. So, um, could have it for flight modes, I suppose. But anyway, just basically as a intellectual exercise, we're going to go through installing a three-position switch in here, just so that we can say we did it, okay? <laughs> but um, basically, I think if you're getting a Fly Sky radio, get what you want. Uh, to where you don't have to modify it and just use it as it is and then if it quits working throw it away and buy another one okay <laughs> don't expect to get any significant support uh, still is at a hundred dollars it, it might be a pretty good thing uh, I did have uh, the last time I was flying with it I did have one incident that I don't know for sure whether it was a gust of wind or whether it was a radio problem um, the plane just <laughs> shot way off in the direction the wind was blowing uh, during a turn. Uh, I was making a left turn, coming basically kind of like on final, and it wasn't landing. And the thing just, poof, you know, 
went way off to the side, couldn't really tell what happened to get it there, had to run out to the middle of the field to be able to see it from behind a tree and uh, was able to fly it back and after that everything was fine. That could have been, you know, it was a really windy day, so it could have been some sort of microburst type thing um, or it could have been a radio problem, I don't know. Um, other than that, it's been working fine for me. Uh, and it's just very difficult with some of those incidents to know just uh, what they are. But uh, let's go through this exercise. So first off, you got these uh, uh, five screws in the back, two at the bottom, uh, two up uh, at the top on the sides and one at the top in the middle. Uh, I take out the battery, of course, uh, when you're doing something like this. So then you um, open her up and you could unplug the uh, the back of it, but no need to do that. And so the first thing that you see is the circuit boards are different for the ones they have there than uh, what the ones that came on the switches. Um, but as I look at the solder connections on the switches, it looks like these switches are going to fit. So I'm going to have to desolder these ones, desolder one out of there, solder this one into that, and uh, go from there. Secondly, just looking at it, it looks to me like it's the nuts on the front that are holding them in position. And it's just a uh, cable that's clipped into probably something like that thing there. Um, so uh, to get them off, we need to undo the nuts. Now, we're going to do the left-hand side over here. So that's the right-hand side looking at the back. Uh, and I need to find my little tool for unscrewing those nuts. So we've got a little tool that uh, we showed you uh, recently how to make in one of our videos. Uh, yeah, these ones over here. And so we want to unscrew these. There's one. There's two. That's the side. As expected, that just comes right out. And then we can unplug this. We note that red is sort of towards the middle. And what sort of clip do those things have? I don't see any clip per se. That's a different type of connector, I think. Can't imagine that's just simply soldered on there. And it sure doesn't want to come off. Okay, it may be that this thing here is actually soldered. Why would they do that? You don't need the plastic bit if you're just soldering it onto a board. Well, totally uncooperative. Okay, we'll leave it hooked on there. Um, so, uh, we'll do the long one, so that's going to be this one over here, and we'll want to hold on to that with something. Now the first thing we have to do to um, uh, get the old switch off is to desolder it. So you use a desoldering braid, or desoldering wick, whatever you want to call it, and you basically heat that up and get it next to the where the solder is, and that should suck the solder up into it. Well, we had quite a wrestling match, but I managed to get it off. Um, essentially ended up uh, holding it with some vice grips <laughs> rather snugly, adding solder to it to where I had everything hot and then uh, pulling it off. So uh, we did get it off. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting the holes opened up by using the desoldering braid. Just heating it up over top of the hole to uh, get the solder out of the hole so I can put the new switch into it. You electrical engineers can probably do a better job at this than I can. After all, I'm just a mechanical engineer. Okay, that got that. Okay, now we need to get this one off. <laughs> so another wrestling match. We'll try the technique I used on the last one. 
Obviously you have to grip it very lightly if you're getting it with vice grips. Okay. So I just figured by adding the solder to it, it gets it really hot. Plus with mo more solder there, it has to, um, let's go ahead and move elsewhere. We don't need to be doing this part over top of our radio. Um, you know, with more solder on it, uh, it um, will stay hot longer as well. Did the job. Okay, and I'll have to desolder those probably to fit them into the holes. Oh, they fit, kind of. <laughs> okay, that's going to work. Okay, three position switch, two position switch. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned before about the antenna placement uh, in this. You see an antenna up there, and it looks to me like this is another antenna lead here that goes right down in the middle behind my thumb there. I was kind of wondering about this thing down here, but that's looks like power to that. That's probably a capacitor or something. Um, but anyway, these appear to be antenna leads. So you've got the one horizontal one up there and a mystery one that this lead goes to. That's inside there someplace. I don't see anything coming up in here. Ideally, I would have thought it would have been vertically in there. But anyway, such as it is, that's it. Okay, I got that soldered. It's ready to go back together. Okay, put our screws back in. Two and a half mil hex. <laughs> you never know where the spare screw is going to end up. I said a thinking magnetism, and then I thought, no, that's wood, that, nothing magnetic there. Okay. Um, maybe we'll have rubber things on the inside switches, huh? Just to be different. So it's got a rubber thing on it, and this one will have a rubber thing on it. I would have liked for this one to have a long handle on it. But anyway, the rubber will help to feel which one it is. 
Okay, now uh, we've got to get the battery in place, and then we've got to tell the radio that we've got a three position switch. So here's our 2S battery. That uh, goes in with a slot on the bottom. There it goes. Make sure it's in all of the way. Tuck in the other wires and things. Cover on. Okay, nice and snug. Fire it up. Fly sky. Okay, what we need to do now is to tell the transmitter uh, what it's got. So we go under menu, uh, transmitter set, uh, go down to switch settings. And switch B is the one that we've replaced with the three position switch. So we press in here, select three position, and now it knows it's a three position switch. So if we're using that for something, um, you know, let's see, where is it? Um, general menu, uh, we go down to auxiliary channel. And let's say we're going to use that for flaps and put that, say, on channel six. So for channel 6, I select switch B. So we've now got switch B for channel 6. Go back out of that, have a look at the monitor, and voila. One, two, three position switch on switch B. So now we've got a three position switch for uh, uh, switch C. And we got a three position switch for B and two positions for A and D. There you go. Well, thank you for watching this video. Trust it's been helpful to you. Uh, if you uh, haven't done so already, be sure and subscribe. That allows you to keep all of these things handy and be able to see the other good things that we've got on our site. Lots of reviews and how-tos and examples of fixing things and flight demonstrations and all kinds of stuff. And of course, uh, while you're at it, then you can also have a look at some of the other content on our site and uh, trust that you'll find it helpful. So I'm RC Jim signing off. You have a great day and happy flying.